Now that we've taken the battery out of the scooter, find yourself a shelf or a counter, someplace where you can hook it up and leave it so you will be able to uh, plug the charger in and charge the battery periodically. The Battery Tender Junior comes with two different options for hooking up to your battery. A temporary option which is alligator clips which simply clip red to the positive side of the battery, black to the negative side of the battery. The other end will plug in to the wall outlet. Very simple interface. The other option is to hook this up permanently to your battery. Just remove the terminal screws and again orienting the red to the positive side and black to the negative side securely tighten the terminals into place on the battery. Now you've got more of a permanent hookup. Even when the battery's in the bike you can leave this. It's got a cap to cover up the um, business end when you're not using it and again it has the same interface as the alligator clips when hooking up to the wall outlet. There's an indicator light that tells you the status of the battery and on the top of the plug-in there's an indicator light operation key. This will tell you the four different modes that your battery light will show. Now the battery tender is ready to plug into the wall. Now according to the way this is designed to operate, you should be able to plug this in and just forget about it because the tender brings the battery to a full charge and then just automatically shuts itself off. I prefer myself to once it's come to a full charge to unplug this from the wall. In case the circuitry in here fails and there is the possibility that it could overcharge your battery. So if you just do this on a monthly basis, every three to four weeks, do it when you're paying your rent or your mortgage, then that will work just fine. Fuel travel travels from the fuel tank to the carburetor through a fuel valve. The fuel line runs down, as you see there's a filter here, the line continues down, goes into the side of the carburetor. Now the fuel runs into the carburetor when there is a vacuum demand on the fuel valve. The vacuum line is right over here and it goes right above your cylinder and what that does is when the cylinder turns over it creates a vacuum drawing the fuel down the fuel line to the carburetor. Getting to the dra draining the uh, float bowl on a Buddy 125 or 150 is a little tricky. You have to remove the front cover and then coming in diagonally through an opening next to the frame, you need a long handled thin bladed slotted screwdriver. Once you feel the screwdriver get into the screw, Turning it carefully counterclockwise will open up the valve and drain the float ball. Installing a new spark plug, one of the most important things to do is make sure that you don't cross thread it. The threads on the spark plug and the threads in the cylinder will match up perfectly as long as you match them up perfectly. The best thing to do to start out is to get the plug started and turn it clockwise slowly. If you feel any resistance at all, you're in the wrong spot. And a lot of times, if you're having trouble getting it started, try turning it backwards a couple of turns before starting it in the proper way. When it's working properly, it turns freely without any resistance. Once you start feeling some resistance as it gets all the way in, then it's time to get out your spark plug wrench and tighten it up. So in, so in the spring, when it's time to get your scooter back out, we basically just reverse the steps. Reinstall your battery. Make sure the battery terminals get good and tight. Then, 
turn your key on, turn the bike over. It's going to take a little bit of time for the carburetor to get primed because you've drained all the gas out of it, or if you haven't drained it, the gas has evaporated from it. So turn your bike over, about five second bursts. Try it for five seconds, stop, try it for five seconds again. Eventually it'll start up. Might take a little bit while to get chugging. But once it's running, let it sit in idle for a while. Now it's ready to ride. First ride you want to make is to your fuel station to check the tire pressure. Your tires should have about 23 to 25 pounds per square inch in the front tire and 28 to 35 in the rear tire. Higher pressure in the rear if you're typically riding with a passenger. And the other thing to remember in the spring is think back, when was your last oil change? Doing oil changes helps the lifetime of your scooter too. So. Every 1,500 to 2,000 miles, your four-stroke scooter should have an oil change. So keep track of that, and if it's time to have that done, then give us a call. We'll put you on the service schedule. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope these tips were helpful, and in the spring, your scooter is going to start up and be ready to roll. I'm Bob Hedstrom from, from Scooterville. Stay tuned for more tips.